Hi there, welcome back. Today I will show you how to use the Polaroid frame effect and how it's created using Fusion tools in DaVinci Resolve. Once the template is installed in DaVinci Resolve, we can apply the effect to the clip in the timeline. Enable the Fusion overlay in the viewer so that we can use the on-screen controls to adjust the frame. Simply move the frame to enclose the part where we want to frame. Resize the frame if needed. We can also rotate the frame. Moving or resizing the original image with these video transform settings will not affect the fusion effect, which gives us more room to frame the image. Once we are done with frame size and position in the viewer, we can go to the Effects tab in the Inspector and adjust other settings, such as the title, text font, round the frame corner, and change the frame border style, the normal border width. Enable or disable the Polaroid border. Change the Polaroid border width. Change the border color and type. Instead of a solid color, we can change it to gradient. If we check the image border option, we can use a custom image or video as the border background. For example, we can drag an image from the media pool and drop it to this clip parameter. Now we have a frame with an image border. We can even use a video as the border background. The shadow section is straightforward, we can use the settings here to change the shadow color and other styles. If we want to move the framed image, we can enable the offset display option. Either change the display with these settings in the inspector, like the center. Size and angle. Or we can use the on screen controls in the viewer. If we don't want to show the original image, we can uncheck the show original option. When the original image is enabled, we can change the brightness or blur the image. OK. We've demonstrated the use of this template in the edit page. And next we will look into some of the main steps of making this effect in the fusion page. Here is a sample image for the demo. Open it in the fusion page. Add a background to the node editor, merge with the media in node. Change the color to white. With the background node selected, Click the Rectangle tool in the toolbar. A Rectangle Mask node is added automatically as the Effect Mask input of the background. Now we see a white box on top of the image. This will be the base of the frame. Rename the Rectangle node to Image Frame. Make a copy of it. Click the background to clear the node selection. Press Ctrl Shift V or right click to paste an instance. Rename it to Image Mask. Select the Media in Node. Click the Mat Control in the toolbar to insert a node after the Media in. Hold the Alt key and drag the Image Mask output to the Mat Control node. Release the button and select Garbage Mat. Select the Mat Control node and expand the garbage mat section in the inspector. Check the invert option because we want to keep the image inside the frame. But now it's showing only the white panel, that's because the background is merged as the foreground input. We can simply press Ctrl T or right click and choose swap inputs in the menu to swap the background and foreground inputs. So it's showing the image but the frame is gone. Select the image mask node, de-instance the border width parameter. Change the width to a negative value 
minus 0.02 looks good. We now have a framed photo with the white border. We can move the frame around or change the size. Select the image mask node, press Ctrl C to create a copy. Make sure the image mask node is still selected, press Ctrl Shift V to paste an instance. This will automatically insert the instance after the image mask node. Select the instance node. Change the paint mode to multiply. De-instance the center parameter. Move the instance up, and we have a white border at the bottom. Because the multiply mode multiplies the value from both masks, and sets the intersection area as the final effect mask, the bottom part of the frame is now revealed and can be used as the Polaroid border. Looks like we're done with the effect, but if we move the frame, the new mask doesn't move together. Select the instance node, right-click the center parameter, choose expression to enable the simple expression input. Change the expression to image mask dot center plus point zero zero point one. This will link the instance mask to the image mask, offset the Y value by zero point one, which is the height of the bottom white border. Now when we move or resize the frame, both masks transform together. But this is not the end yet. Because the masks get out of sync if we rotate the frame. Because the rotation pivot is the mask center, these two masks have different center points, so the rotation will not work together. Select Image Mask node. De-instance the angle parameter, so that the image mask will not follow the rotation of the image frame. Insert a transform node after the instance mask. Enter equals in the pivot field to enable simple expression. Change the expression to image frame dot center to link the pivot to frame center. Also modify the angle with a simple expression and set the expression to image frame dot angle so that it rotates both masks together when we rotate the frame. OK, we now completed the Polaroid frame effect. Even though the rotation part is a bit tricky, everything else is straightforward. You can always download the template, open it in the Fusion page, and check out the complete node tree for reference. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.